My name is Christopher Law Eugene Malone. Um, I'm a rancher up in uh, Franklin, Kentucky right now. Well, I grew up in Texas, so you're either a cowboy or an Indian, and both of them ride horses. And I just fell in love with horses my entire life. And it's actually really just relaxing, it's peaceful, you know. I wasn't feeling the atmosphere of going to college, so I wanted to do something that's more challenging, but rewarding, you know. And so I was like, well, let's join the military. So I found the most challenging branch I could. And the Marine Corps was everything that they said it was gonna be, and plus a little bit more. I did do some designated marksmanship, pretty much as guardian angels to everybody on the ground. So I would just observe everything was going on, pay attention, be alert. And then, you know, if there was any targets, you know, gotta save my guys. It was a hot and crappy day, and uh, we have just moved from, you know, one hot spot to the next. Some things started, I think there was a couple explosions, a couple ambushes that got hit. Um, so we decided to take a Humvee back on a, uh, on a wagon train, pretty much, and that's just carrying supplies back and forth to bases. You know, we hopped in a truck, you know, there was a private driving. He looked nervous and just scared, and I was like, you know, please, just, I'll take over. I got a Humvee license, just, you know, let me, let me drive. Well, I'm glad I drove, because I guess the other guys didn't get hurt, but I did. I took a, uh, a Sidewinder, Russian uh, MiG-27 Sidewinder, and apparently they had it up on bi bi bipods with a laser-guided system on it. And so pretty much all it was was, you know, a send button on a cell phone, and it came roaring through the alleyway. And it hit me right underneath my seat. So it was like an upward explosion, but thankfully it was isolated just to my area. The other guys were unscathed. I was crushed inside the vehicle, actually. And uh, it took forever to get me out. And they were just pouring water on me constantly. So the, the time they got me out, they got me stabilized. My legs were all messed up. I had metal fragments. Actually, my rifle fragments are still inside my body. They finally got me out, and they got me stabilized as much as they could, and threw me on a truck, and we hightailed it back to HQ as fast as possible. For some reason, when I got to the States, I fell into a coma, and I was in a coma for a couple weeks. Um, so when I came out, I had a big surprise. You know, my daughter was born. You know, I wasn't able to hold her or anything for about three months. I have uh, th two daughters one boy and I guess we pretty much just adopted our, our 14 year old niece so it's a house full. <laughs> we bought a house and it's a great house with wonderful wonderful property we love the ranch but uh, I don't know if you know what an L-shaped bathroom is but it's you go through one door and then you immediately got to take another door left and you can't get a wheelchair through it. We have had the biggest problem trying to get help to you know build onto the house or fix the bedroom and bathroom. The Joshua Chamberlain Society is amazing. Everything they have done, it probably would have taken me two years. You know, it's not, it's not like life-threatening, like I, I need this tomorrow, but they're, they're taking it as that. It's been a long, long, hard journey. I mean, it's between the surgeries and trying to rehabilitate myself and trying to be a father at the same time. It is extremely hard. But, you know, I have a great family. You know, my kids understand everything. You know, they'll love me no matter what. And I've got a really good wife back in me, so we've managed to make it through all that. I have no idea what the future's gonna hold, but I'll tell you, I'm, I'm happy right now. I'm happy with my life, my kids, and the fact that they're all helping me through, you know, whatever difficulties I have, I know they're gonna be there. So, yeah, I'm doing good.